At the end of 2010, I was asked to go to Nigeria to scope out the uh, Nollywood film industry, which people have been talking about for a very long time, only to discover on the Monday morning of the week when we were starting this exercise that when we met 15 of the major producers in, in Lagos, they said, well, there is no Nollywood film industry anymore. We stopped producing movies about six months ago. And it turns out that piracy which has been the thing that's been written about everywhere and is being taken to law courts all over the place, actually, is, is, in terms of destroying an industry, has effectively had its first real victim, which was Nollywood. Uh, essentially, the pirates were undercutting the local producers to such an extent that there was no way a local producer could actually make any money back on the film after they'd finished it. Now, this has led to a really interesting set of developments, which is essentially three or four different ways in which people can actually progress and try and rebuild their businesses. One of these is the language route. In essence, you're basically saying if you've got a language group of a certain scale, then you can make films for that language group. But it's not so big that the pirates think it's worth trying to undermine that market. So you're working for a biggish language group, but not so big that everyone thinks, oh, there's money in that. We'll just make a lot of cheap DVDs and undercut the local production. The, the, the second route is mm -hmm. to beat the pirates at their own game. People are actually trying to build their own distribution networks right down to village level, which would mean that once the film was finished, literally within 48 hours, their copies of the DVDs would be in the villages way ahead of the pirates. So this is like taking the pirates on at their own game. It's like, let's do the distribution thing ourselves, control it, have our own licenses. And really fast. Yeah. And really it's a time fast. Time issue, yeah. Really timing issue. In other words, a big bulk of copying machines running full tilt the minute the film's finished. And then the DVD is just shunted out in the hundreds of thousands. And then the third route, which is the route I think is going to be probably the most commercially viable in the longer term, is actually go more up market with quality, but buying into a much heavier studio-based approach, which is now very evident in Nigerian television and some other African television cable stations. And there you get more money, you get paid more money for the productions. You can finance the films off the back of TV series and use ad spend and sponsorship spend to actually cover your initial costs so that when it even goes into distribution, that is effectively becomes all profit. And so therefore, even if the pirates beat you to your local market, you've probably still got the diaspora, you've still got cable networks outside of your home country. And of course, in the future, with the growth of 3G and 4G and broadband development, you will actually have a fair amount of business coming through by TV cable networks and TV net TV stations. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other... Well, how, how do you think... Um, the, 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 the Nollywood will shape up within the next uh, two years. Apart That's from a, what you, you from you what I know, yeah, yeah. well, Nollywood will never come back the way it was. It'll okay. never have that level of production again. Mm -hmm. I think what is in terms of volume, in terms of volume, yeah. Yeah. Um, so more quality maybe. Um, more, I think there will be a, a small percentage of very high end quality that we will be buying into very high end production values, which will be sponsored through TV productions, basically. Yeah. I think there will be a new distribution network set up. Um, whether it can survive, nobody at this stage can really say, to be honest. Mm -hmm. And I think there will be a growth of local language uh, filmmaking, probably throughout Africa, to be honest, to combat the piracy issue. Yeah. But this means that the big language groups in Africa, like Swahili and so on, will find it very, very difficult yeah. to actually operate in a pirated network. What, what did you think of the, uh, the you know, film theatres uh, circuits in, in, uh, in Nigeria? Uh, are there many theatres around? Uh, there's not they, a lot. To generate money back to the no, project? this is the problem, there's not a lot. There's only two major multiplexes that have just been built using South African money, to the best of my knowledge, in Lagos, that are attracting this, uh, a, a young, new middle class, but they're watching American movies, okay. uh, because the Nigerian films are not of the standard that the exhibitors want to put them on the screen, obviously an American film.
that, that could change maybe? But that or? could change. Yeah. That could okay. change. The TV route, that quality route, mm. could actually get start to see money coming by that. Now, to make that really profitable, though, you need to have a string of cinemas. Now, there are people in Nigeria at the moment thinking of building new cinemas, regional, local cinemas, mm -hmm. that sit, you know, 600 people or maybe a 1,000 in local neighbourhoods, which apparently 30 years ago was there, and they've all been taken over, wiped out, etc., etc. Mm -hmm. And the same thing is beginning to emerge in places like Ghana, Ghana's got its first multiplex cinema in Accra, mirrored in what's happened in Lagos and in South Africa. Now I can see that happening around the continent in the bigger cities, but whether it's ever going to return enough to producers of local films at this moment is unlikely because it's just not the volume of screens. Yeah, it will take time. It would take time. Okay, well, thank you very much. That's it.